So welcome to Technodad Life and today what we're going to do is test three different machines for a home media server. So a Nook, a Raspberry Pi 4, and a Codelix. A special thank you to all my patrons who without your support this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a supporter of the channel you love. Thank you. And my name is Jeff and today we're going to look at three different things. So basically we have a Nook, we have a Raspberry Pi, and it's got its hard drive with it. And then finally, we have the Codelex. And so what is different about these things? Well, this one is a five-year-old Nook. The Raspberry Pi came out last year. So the Codelex is a new PC that has two Ethernet ports on the back, which makes me very excited. If we look at these three computers, this is the Raspberry Pi kit. I bought mine when it first came out, and let's just say it was more expensive than this. But the basic four gigabyte kit is $400. And then I also have an Argon case for it, which is now selling for $25. I paid $45 for it when it came out. And then finally, we need a USB drive enclosure. And so that's about eight bucks for the cheapest one. So our total currently for the Raspberry Pi is 100, 125 plus eight, $133. Our next computer is the Codelix. And this one I just got. And so the Codelix is about $150. Finally, we have the Intel Nook. So this is a five-year-old computer. And that currently, this one has four gigabytes. But currently, the, what I could find was about $180 for one. But I paid less than that for mine. So we'll just say it's $150 for right now. Now, if we look at the form factor of these three computers, the smallest is the Raspberry Pi, but you have to have an external drive attached to it. So it actually ends up being quite big. If you compare that to the Nook, you can see the hard drive sticks out there. Now for those of you who say to put the hard drive underneath, uh, what I found is the Raspberry Pi makes the hard drive hot and then you start to get drive errors. So it's better to just leave it on the side. I have seen some, I just saw one. I've been looking for like a 3D printed case where you could have the hard drive underneath like that. Uh, I just saw one, but it doesn't fit this case. It has, it has to be something that fits this case because I like this case. So next we have the Nook, which just the base of the, or just the main part of the Raspberry Pi, it's bigger than that. But then again, we have this extra hard drive there. Uh, so the Nook, so things about the Nook, so it has a couple USB 3 ports on the back, Ethernet, HDMI. VGA, optical out, the power, and then it has a powered USB 3 and USB 3 on the front and headphones, Raspberry Pi, has Ethernet, two USB 3, two USB 2, two mini HDMIs, a USB-C connector, and an audio connector. Now, the new kit on the block is the Codelex. And so this one is more interesting. So on the front, it has two USB 2, a powered USB 3, a microphone, and, and two things which I don't know what they are. So on the back, it has power, a mini display port, HDMI, two Ethernet ports, a USB-C, and a lock. Now, storage-wise for the Raspberry Pi, we just have our SD card and we can hook in some external USB drives. So basically all the drives are outside. For the Nook, we can hook up USB drives, but also it has an internal 2.5 inch drive, which can be their SSD or regular hard drive. Codelix, again, you can hook up some USB drives on the front here. 
It has a 2.5 inch drive, but it has room for two M.2 drives, a small one and a large one. So basically you can have three internal hard drives on this one. So the Nook has a quad core N3700. Ma uh, maximum speed is 2.4 gigahertz. The Raspberry Pi has a Cortex A7 quad core max 1.5. I have mine overclocked to 2.0. And then the Codelix has a quad core J4105. Max speed is 2.5 gigahertz. So for the Nook, this has a Intel high definition graphics. For the Raspberry Pi, it has Broadcom Video Core 6 graphics. And the Codelix has the Intel Ultra High Definition 600 graphics. So today we're looking at how well these will work for a home media server. And so one of the things with a home media server is it needs good graphics in case you need to do transcoding. So now out of those three, the graphics should be worst, middle, and best. So how did it turn out when I actually tested? And so we know from one of my videos before that the Raspberry Pi can only transcode one video at a time, but it can play uh, direct play up to six videos, 1080p at, at a time. So just one transcode, no 4K video, uh, it's supposed to do H.265, but uh, what I found is at the higher bit rates, it did, wasn't able to do that. Next was our Intel Nook, which I only had four devices today to transcode with. And so the Intel Nook could transcode four uh, 1080 stre 1080p streams into 720p, no problems. It could not, though, play... 4K video and it could not play uh, H.265 video. So the Codelix could play 4K video and it could transcode two 4K streams into different 4K bit rates at the same time uh, and it could do as many 1080p streams encoding that I had at the time, which again was four. So for transcoding, this would be your best bet. The other stutter if you're gonna use H.265, so don't plan on using these ones. Next, let's take a look at power use. So next we're going to do the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so we got up to about 6.4. I'll have to go look back in the video to see what it was because I was logging in. And then uh, about 4.5 at idle, which is actually more than the code licks, which was about 3.4. Okay, and last one, we have the Intel Nook. Actually, it seems to be starting out higher already, just being plugged in. Let's press the power button. And I can hear it, can't really see anything now. Oh, it's going up. Okay, so now we're logged in. So definitely the Nook is the worst out of the three. So the best power consumption was the Raspberry Pi, but it was just by a little bit. And I'll leave the numbers for each one down here. Coming a close second was the Codelix, however you say this. And then finally, in a distant third, was the Nook. Okay, now, so which one is the winner? So if we just look at price performance, it's actually the Codelix. It actually has the most uh, expandability, and it can, you can have three different types of drives in here if you need that. Also has the option in the future for if you want to use this as a router. It has the two Ethernet ports, so you can do that. Also very quiet. Next for most efficient, but not necessarily most capable, was the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, it doesn't necessarily use that much energy compared to say something like the Codelix, so you'll only be saving a few pennies per month on electricity with this. 
Uh, what I didn't like about this was the having to have the drive externally. Uh, this case though, I love this case though. Finally in a distance third was a old nook and so this definitely used the most power. It was also the loudest. It did uh, do transcoding better than the Raspberry Pi though. Now having said all that, so basically they cost about the same price. For myself, this is what I'm going to use. But if you have one of these running around someplace, you can definitely use those. These are also pretty good too. They're just not going to do 4K. And this one is only going to transcode one stream. So check out my other videos about how to set up your own media server. And that's it for today. Hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.